Wrath of the Lich King was the first expansion to really push collections as a form of meta content in World of Warcraft. Sure, we had the likes of companion pets since vanilla, and the idea of getting a shiny new tabard and a mount after hitting Exalted from a reputation from TBC was very common. But the problem with it was twofold. One, it wasn't something which was tracked anywhere, which made it a bit more difficult to know what you had and what you were still trying to get. And secondly, arguably even more importantly, storage. Everything takes up a bag spot or a bank place. There's simply more things to collect than there are places to store them, and if like me you've held on to all your old vanilla and TBC tier sets because I am not about to delete them, and then you've tried to collect other things, you realise you have to store them on alts, or just get reputations then never buy anything, it just doesn't work out. In Wrath, two main things change to help this, those are the tabs for mounts and pets allowing you to learn both of these which then you can summon through the interface whenever wherever. Blizzard didn't do a tab for toys or heirlooms though, they didn't do that until War Lords of Draenor for some reason, which is unfortunate because it doesn't look like we're going to get this change in Wrath Classic. On top of that we have the achievement system that actively tracks what you have collected and even gives you extra rewards for hitting milestones. So today I thought I'd really indulge the collection and discovery side of Wrath of the Lich King. I've dug through the internet, old forum posts and collection blogs and tried to come up with some of the most obscure collection items or secrets the game possibly has to offer. I bet you know some of these if you played the game, but I'd be surprised if you know all of them. I played the whole way through Wrath and I had no idea a bunch of these exist. I want to start off in the magical city known as Dalaran. It's a place that's been mysterious since vanilla, visible from the Alteric Mountains but surrounded by a huge barrier with mages patrolling the perimeter. For Wrath, it will now become the main faction hub for the expansion, being found floating above the Crystal Song Forest. And the name Dalaran is given as a magical city is all too fitting. The amount of secrets present in this one place are likely way more than you would have thought. But I want to start beneath Dalaran, in the sewers. The first secret, I guess if you can call it that, is super easy to miss. It's the portal to the sewers. You knew about the portal in the well just outside the barber shop and the blacksmith, right? Hey, it's easy access to the sewers and I bet you've run past it hundreds of times. Once you're down there, you probably also know it's the PvP hub for the expansion too, where all the battle masters and arena vendors are located, but there's also quite a bit more going on down there. Fun fact here, during Legion when Blizzard reused Alaran as the expansion's hub, the sewer area could be turned into a free-for-all PvP PvP area, where defeating other players and looting chests would reward a currency that could be used to buy various items. Imagine if they had this for Wrath the Lich King, how chaotic it would be without sharding. It won't happen of course, but I thought I'd mention it. The first thing you may have noticed down this area are small glass containers filled with some green looking liquid. These are underbelly elixirs, and of course being the intelligent and discerning adventurer that you are, you drink this random thing you just found on the floor of a sewer, and it gives a variety of bonus effects whilst in Dalaran. Either turn you into a fly inside the underbelly where you can reach areas that would previously be cut off. Don't think about trying to leave the sewer though as the buff will wear off. Turning every NPC into human mages in tier 2, most likely to cause PTSD for warrior players back from classic. This is a play on Dalaran being known as the city of mages, a bit too literally. The third effect is the most interesting. It's about as close as you can get to playing a Tuscar as a race in World of Warcraft. It will transform you into them for 10 minutes and give you a nice fishing buff as well, which you can very very much take advantage of whilst down here, which we'll talk about in a moment. There's also plenty of references to other games and franchises down in the sewer as well. Blizzard has always been big on doing this kind of thing. You can see four Dalaran sewer turtles huddled attentively around a Dalaran sewer rat, almost as if he is their master and they are learning from him, and not too subtle nod to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle series. Over on the other side of the sewer is Sega Sedi, the sewer shark. You've probably all seen him swimming around, but have you ever wondered what the name is all about? Out. Well, see, Sewer Shark was a 1992 game released on, wouldn't you guess it, the Sega CD, where the player was in a post-apocalyptic futuristic world where they had to exterminate dangerous mutated creatures in the city's sewer network. Also, there was an interesting comment I found on Wowhead that in Slovenian, its name means it's dripping, a very ominous name for a shark. Or if I throw it into Google Translate, juices. 
do with that information what you will. Anyways, about that Tuscar fishing buff you get, there's a few cool hidden things that you can fish up specifically in the sewer, though I think these are pretty well known as the giant sewer rat as a companion pet for your collection, or the less commonly known magic eater, a fish that when you eat for 10 seconds does, well, something. Either giving your buff or 30 stamina and a random stat, or turning you into something else entirely for a minute, kind of like the Halloween trick or treat debuffs. Back in the city above though, there are also so many different secrets. If you go and take a seat in the aptly named Shoeshine Seat in the upstairs of Threads of Fate, the gnome Shadow Gloskling will come over and give you a shoe shine for free, giving you a cosmetic one hour buff that leaves a nice shiny effect on your feet. What exactly happens when a troll sits in the chair though? Pedicure? Because I know they don't wear shoes. I'm going to need a lore breakdown here or the expansion's ruined. In fact, many of the shops have some small and strange interactions. One of these is the shop One More Glass next to the barbers. They sell several different bottles and casts of wine that have a flavour text improves with age alongside a duration of 365 days. Yep, that's right. At the start of Wrath the Lich King, people saw this and went wild with imagination. They bought it, waited for an entire year. Some of them spent 250g on a random item before they found out what it did. Though, so, uh, I guess I'll have to do the same. The things I do for you guys. Anyway, be right back. One eternity later. Okay, it's finally done. And it's turned into a pet, maybe. How about a mount? Wait, no, it's the same item with a different name and it's blue instead. Huh. Well, better make the most of it then. Anyways, moving on, there's a bunch of achievements too in the city, one of which gives a reward that you wouldn't expect after having done it. This is from Higher Learning. This has you go on a book hunt all throughout the city to read different tomes pertaining to a whole host of magical schools, enchantment, necromancy, divination, and so on. After you've collected all eight, you get a special book in the mail, The Schools of Arcane Magic Mastery. What you wouldn't know until you've received it is exactly what this reward does, as whilst in Dalaran, it allows you to teleport to a secret area known as Archmage Vargoth's Retreat. This Archmage has been a mysterious and enigmatic character throughout the history of World of Warcraft, making a first major appearance during a large quest line in Neverstorm where you free him from a tower where he's being kept prisoner. Upon talking to him in his retreat, he rewards you with a companion pet, the Kirin Tor Familiar, which looks like a small mana elemental. It's a pretty unique pet and it's hard to come by, so expect tons of competition hunting those books on the big servers. Next up, have you ever noticed the lights that are on during the night time in Dalaran? Well, there are. Scattered throughout the city are lampposts and lights, all of which need to be turned on. And this is done by none other than a gnome named Windle Sparkshine. He patrols the streets from 9pm server time and onwards, lighting up fixtures of the city. And if you want, you can help out. He will sell you an item, Windle's Lighter, which has a 15 minute duration and only 5 charges. You can then go around interacting and turning on lights. There's no real point to this in Wrath the Lich King beyond, hey, it's a fun thing to know about, I guess. The most obvious reference here seems to be the Put Outer from Harry Potter, an item that's best known for taking light away from street lights during the opening of the first book. Either way, this is one of the ways Blizzard added to the world in small ways during Wrath. Next up, we all know about the mounts from achievements in Wrath of the Lich King, the likes of Glory of the Raider or Glory of the Hero. However, there are also some profession recipes that are gained from these big meta achievements, which are way more obscure. First up from Northrend Dungeon Master. This is an achievement pretty much all players are going to get done over the course of the expansion. It's as simple as just completing each dungeon that's available at release once. After having done this as a tailor with 420 skill or above, you can visit the trainer in Dalaran and there will be an extra gossip option which will allow you to learn how to craft the Wisp Cloak, an epic item level 200 healer dedicated cloak with some MP5 on it and a bunch of spells power. Most importantly, however, this is a BOE, so it's a decent starter cloak for fresh 70s throughout the expansion. There is another achievement that awards a further hidden cloak pattern that'll take quite a bit more grinding, though if you're a completion-oriented player, it's going to be something that you will unlock naturally. This is from Lawmaster of Northrend, which, similar to all other Lawmaster achievements, just wants you to complete a ton of quests in each of the expansion zones. When you have done this, you can again visit the Dalaran Tailor 
tailor with a skill of 420 or above to learn how to craft the Death Jill Cloak, another item level 200 epic quality item. However, the stats on this are actually very good considering you can get it without having to do any raid content, boasting a ton of spell crit, spell damage, and some haste. In fact, if you are looking at pre-raid bis list, this is going to be a consideration for many casters. And of course, just like Wisp Cloak, it's BOE. There may be gold to be made here if you are getting Lawmaster of Northrend early on, so keep it in mind. Next one is something you will not see for a while, because the NPC who sells this item won't be available until ICC, but it's pretty obscure, so I thought I'd throw it in. Oh, and it's also for Alliance only. Anyways, after having defeated Deathbringer Sourfang, a reagent vendor spawns called Brazzy Gets. He's a level 69 elite gnome, you may already be seeing where this is going, and beyond selling the usual reagents, he also sells Brazzy's Black Book of Secrets for 22 thousand gold. Inside this book are some of the best kept secrets of Azeroth which, let's just say Blizzard wouldn't have put in the game these days. In fact, I'm now wondering whether this item will be removed from the game when it's due to release. A while back you may remember Blizzard changed loads of in-game art to fruit bowls and deleted a load of in-game jokes too. This may just be too rude for our pure minds to endure. Also, there were some other things that this guy sold which, uh, yeah, maybe they shouldn't have been in the game to begin with, let's be honest. Finally, an item from a daily quest that you may have missed out on originally. After having completed a number of quests in Zuldrak, you will be offered a daily quest, Troll Patrol. This has you visit a number of guard posts throughout Zuldrak and complete various activities for them. Aside from giving some gold and reputation with the Argent Crusade, this will also unlock the follow-up quest, Congratulations, which awards the Patrollers Pack. This contains various extra rewards for having completed the quest within 20 minutes. These bonus rewards are usually just some greens and a bit more gold, nothing that seems worth the effort, apart from a unique trinket, the Deputy Patroller Badge. What does it do? Well, it shows everyone how awesome you are, of course. How exactly? I mean, you're wearing it. That means you're awesome. What more could you possibly want from it? Anyways, this is estimated to be a 1% drop rate or lower for a pure meme item, but if you are on that serious completion grind, then you better start learning some fast routes for this quest in Wrath. And that's everything I decided to include today. There's actually a bunch more stuff, rare locations, there's a ton of pop culture references and so on in the game, but I thought it'd be fun to talk about a few of them and do some more lighthearted content. Let me know how many of these you knew about already, if there's any other cool hidden things you think I should do another video about and you don't think anyone else knows about them, do comment below and I'll see what I can do. As always guys, thank you all so much for watching and listening in and I shall see you all in the next one very soon.